What's up guys, how's it going? It's Kadizi here and we have yet another hardcore video. In this hardcore video, it's, it comes after about 70 to 75 hours on the hardcore PTR. Also, I guess the PvP PTR, but this video is going to be focused on the hardcore official rule set PTR servers that came out a few weeks ago. It was down for a single week, but I think we had at least a couple weeks of this being up or maybe three. And I, got, I have a level 30 warrior. I have another warrior in his 20s. Uh, the current level cap is still level 30 as of July 28th. And um, why am I spending so much time on the PTR? Uh, these characters can get wiped. I, I just feel like it's my duty. I feel like I know a lot about the game, the interactions and things like that. And plus, I just wanted to immerse myself in this rule set um, to see what it's like. If you guys have seen my other videos, I'm sort of someone who is a strong proponent for what Solo Cell Found kind of did for World of Warcraft. Uh, in, in current year right um to get to the gist of w what my message has been is, is it's the antidote to all the modern problems that you see in this game right if you log on classic era uh, on one of the clusters white main you go stand in storm and go stand in orgrimmar look at that trade chat looking for group scroll constant gold buying constant uh selling runs uh selling anything you can think of purchasing with real money uh you can do that there and that's what the game is kind of devolved into same with uh, Wrath of Lich King. If you want to buy all the new tier 9 and the new TOGC, go swipe and you'll get the full set. This also drives rampant botting like you've never seen before on both versions of Classic. And alternatively, uh, on Blood Sale was this shining jewel where it's like, hey, what if I told you that the game is just as fun without any of that bullshit? And obviously there's some features that got in the crossfire, right? Grouping, people really harp on the grouping aspect. So I'm going to go all in on what I experienced on the Hardcore PTR official rule set as a SSF Andy, or an SSF Knight, as I romantically refer to myself. But anyway, let's get started. So first thing we gotta talk about is the differences in the rules, right? So let's talk about grouping. Grouping on official, um, it's pretty much unrestricted. The only thing that's sort of similar to the add-on Hardcore is that dungeons have a restriction. And instead of only be able to do a one dungeon ever of a specific kind, um, you can do one dungeon a day, meaning they all reset on the following uh, daily server reset, right? Honestly, this is a great feature. I feel like if you're a, a kind of fast leveler, you're only going to do the dungeons one time. Um, and if you have, if you really need a reason to go back, it's there. But I feel like my entire time to 30 uh, on both characters, I've only done each dungeon once. And that's felt natural. Um, They've always been great social experiences, and, and they were as well with the add-on when you did one-time dungeons. Uh, you really had to kind of hope you're inviting really good people. I, I got people into my Discord. We had a really good time on the PTR. Marilex sounds like a, a medication or something. Ask your doctor if Narilex is right for you. Right. Narilex, Narilex. Come on in, Narilex. Two old people hanging out in a park type commercial. On the other hand, with unrestricted grouping out in the open world, I think what this kind of makes the hardcore into is, I, I mean, without a doubt, I think saying the difficulty is a lot easier. It's it's without a doubt. This is like objectively, if you're going to a tough quest alone versus in, with a group of three, which one's going to be more difficult? Obviously, when you're by yourself, right? Really. Right now, you see on the screen, I'm doing Torx Assault. This is a quest, a classic quest where warriors really want to do it early because the one hand sword's not that good, but the earlier you get it, like 19, 18, the better it is if you're trying to tank something with a shield, right? And usually you, you, you can solo it. It's a little bit challenging. Things can go wrong, but here, just duoed it, no problem. Got my sword, left Ashen Veil, vale, and the quest is no longer has that edge to it, right? But, you know, I'd be silly not to mention um, just what what you have access to. You have access to all these interesting elite quests that you would never have been able to solo on, on the add-on version. Uh, I saw a video on Reddit the other day where someone was talking about, hey, we did the we did the Night Elf uh, roaming elites in the Barrens with a group of four. And that stuff's awesome. That's, that's a cool experience. You have the risk of death and you're doing pretty tough quests outdoors. Uh, but we're going to go. We're going to finish them off anyway. Easy enough. We don't need a healer, we just got Frost Mages, kite them around, and it's pretty much GG. 
Looks like we have aggro from a Kodo in the in the back as well. Or oh, I have aggro. Little evocation, get some more mana. Yeah, DPS down this Kodo. We've got another sheet that's broken. Oh, you netted him, nice. Easy group. Nice, We've got a resheep nice. there on the square. That's good. Nice one. Big DPS going down. Sheep's but part of me feels like I have to emphasize what is lost with, with all this, right? I feel like you, you, you can get a comparable outdoor group experience or or something like that on a regular classic air server, non-hardcore. But what you get from having a, a type of soul self found mode when you're out and doing quests alone is your heart rate is through the roof. You're, you're constantly turning around. You're scared for your life. Without that, you, when you're able to group some of these tough quests like Ordanus, um, any quest that involves a cave, counterattack, just things that like involve finesse and, and, and kind of knowing what's going on and things like that. All of those experiences are effectively gone because there is no reason to not group uh, if you can group, right? And I'm, I'll, I'll address the people saying, well, if you, if you don't want to group, don't group. You know, what are you complaining about? I'm going to address all of that pretty soon. So I'm going to address the differences in the modes. And I think the next thing that we should address is uh, uh, trading auction house and mail. This is a huge change. Um, this is like a, another multiplier on, you know, how I said, hey, this shit's so easy when you, you, you just group all the hard shit. You're able to effectively always keep your gold because whenever you're over your the amount of money you need for training, just send that excess gold to a bank cult. I have a bank cult with about 12 gold that I send him everything to sell. Um, and that money is going to be bankrolled into my next character. Um, another thing that makes trading AH and all that stuff a lot easier is you can get optimal gaps in your gear for pretty cheap. I'd be out in the world and, you know, I, I remember playing with this rogue and he's like, hey man, I have these six spalders, right? And these were amazing spalders for my level uh, as a warrior. These are my first shoulders, and and we have been grouping out in the open world all day. And he's like, hey, dude, I'll give it to you for a gold, right? And that's an awesome social experience. But like I said, comparable to one that you can get if you just played on regular classic era. Uh, I don't know how amazing it is in, in a hardcore mode when it pretty much just nerfs the game mode a little bit for me. But I was gracious. I accepted it in the hopes of using it for research and how it felt to have that. Um, constantly selling greens I have, bankrolling that into uh, future alts and things like that. You know, I have three wands for all my future, you know, caster alts. Those are going to be ready from the get-go. There's going to be no struggle period, you know, level one through 10, trying to farm up a wand. And um, that experience is pretty much gone. I think the biggest L that hardcore takes in not being or not incentivizing any type of soul self found play is that it no longer feels like a roguelike. And if you guys know what a roguelike is, it's like a it's a dungeon crawler that's procedurally generated, involves it's like an RPG with a lot of chance involved in. The the roguelike elements with hardcore WoW is the fact that you'd roll a character and you might get a swiftness pot. You might get like a DV delight recipe or something like that. Um, you might get amazing items like you know amazing two minute sword on your human warrior. Things like that that would just drastically impact your play. In the one-time dungeon, you might get Cruel Barb and Smite Hammer in the same run. All these things could happen that may not happen on your second character that's also a human warrior that, that comes along. Right now, you have everything at your fingertips from the get-go. On my bank call, you could probably see that, hey, I have like three sofa spot recipes and like two DV, uh, D Delight recipes, right? You have everything at your fingertips from weapons to items to everything. Um, that game of praying that to the RNG gods that you get stuff that makes your hardcore journey easier, it's gone. You, have, you can get anything you want. You have everyone's RNG chances and pickups to rely upon. Oh man, I'm going to get a lot of shit for this, but the next thing is professions. I've kind of realized the meta for official hardcore is going to be don't bother with crafting professions. Pick up a gathering profession, send all the gathering materials to a bank alt. And the reason I say this is because you can group the tough quests, like I've emphasized before. Those situations in a cave or populated areas where you have to drop a target dummy or you got a pot, 
something like that. Those things, those situations are gone, right? Invite a couple people who are in the area and, and, and go through it. So, like I said, this is feels like Classic Era where the meta for Classic Era, if you were a sweaty player or someone who kind of knew what they were doing, uh, as some people might interpret it, was get to 60 immediately, don't fuck with professions, maybe do gathering professions, but not to the extent where it'll take you too long. Just come back with an epic mount. That's always been the meta. When Classic launched in 2019, uh, I... I made it to. I, I think I crafted a wand, and then I hit sixty like in a week and a half. Then I came back with my uh, fell steed, right, as a warlock, and cleaned up professions. Dominated the server, you know, from that point on. This was Anathema, one of one of the lower pop servers. But I, I kind of get that vibe. So what I've been doing is pretty much just hoarding all the things I've been gathering, sending it to a bank halt, and I'm not leveling alchemy because I've not needed any pots. Uh, if I were a miner, I would just mine all the ore and send it to a bank halt. Don't worry about engineering or a target dummy. Just group those quests where you would need those things. And people might be like, okay, well, you're going to do that. You're going to die. I have I've like almost three thirties right now, and I've not been in any of those situations, right? And 30 to 60, I believe now that I have like more get out of jail cards, uh, you get more skills, more spells, shield wall, things like that. It's only going to get easier from here on out, right? And I'm going to continue to group, get out of those shitty situations. I think the play feels like professions aren't the move. Um, gather if you can. Definitely gather, because that's that's gold. But crafting? Crafting is just an uh, investment, a, a potential sunk cost. Because if you die, all that gathering shit's gone. You, you see my bank called all the herbs in it, right? I'm not going to level... Er I'm not going to use those herbs until I have a 60 who can utilize them, right? But I'm still going to gather them because whenever I get that character to 60 with alchemy, I'm going to have all those herbs ready to go. Uh, so there's no situation where I'm out questing and I die because Blizzard server is getting DDoSed. I still have all those herbs. As I kept playing this, I kept thinking like, who did Blizzard make this game mode for? There was a hardcore version that had in the hundreds of thousands of add-on downloads and we received a version that just feels like classic era in every single way. I talked about all these experiences of, hey, you can trade and make money on a bank alt. I can go to classic era and have that same dopamine hit where I have a bank alt that's making money on a brand new server, right? Or, or an established server even. The whole appeal of hardcore was you got that six slot bag out of nowhere oh my god i don't gotta spend i don't have to spend five silver or you get that freaking swiftness pot no there's 10 swiftness pots on the auction house now but you get that swiftness pot on soul self found oh my god you're a rich man or you're someone who's going to survive a lot better because you're an alchemist now you can get out of situations a lot easier all these feelings are gone and one through 30 i felt nothing so I'm sure what you're thinking is, if you don't agree with me is, hey, if you want to go play Soul Cell Found, just do it. Blizzard even said this when uh, each interviewer would ask about a Soul Cell Found buff, just something to appease the community that made this mode even possible, right? And the main thing you hear is, hey, if you want to go do Soul Cell Found, go do it. Don't trade, don't auction house. You don't need anything to be put in the game. And as bad faith as that entire statement is, I'm gonna delve into why I don't think that's acceptable. I feel like we've heard that every single time that there's been sort of a community fracture design decision, right? Um, when Classic came out, world buffs were left as is, right? And people would say something like, hey, it's kind of frustrating to have to collect all these and then raid log. And people would say, hey, no one's forcing you to get uh, world buffs just don't get them and those people were always idiots like w was it true that you, you could just go without the world buffs yeah you could and then you wouldn't parse and then you probably would lose your raid spot or you would join a guild that probably raids once a month and doesn't know what the hell they're doing raid world buffs were com compulsory right and people did ask for things like you know a chrono boon before it was made and it took them until the very end of classic to say hey you know what World buffs are pretty much compulsory, and just telling people that they don't have to get them is stupid. It's bad faith, right? Let's let's 
another instance in WoW's history. I've played this game for so long that I can think of all these times that people have said, just go away, right? And another time when um, tokens in Wrath of the Lich King back in the day, this is something Mike Morheim, I believe, asked the guy who's in charge of rewards. It was like, hey, let's put the tier gear of the previous patch on, on the badge vendor so you could grind five mans when the new tier comes out of the previous tier, right? And pretty much what this did was, either intentional or not, it pretty much killed the idea of raid progression, right? Going from one raid to the next raid, all all as a guild, right? Your entire guild could be caught up on the current tier uh, pretty quickly just doing five mans, right? And people would say something like, oh, it's kind of lame that that gear, um, there's no reason to go back to those old raids and um, now the, the idea of raid progression is dead and people would say, hey, Nothing's stopping you guys from going and doing knacks and not touching the badge gear. And it's like, no, dude, you fundam fundamentally changed the whole design, whole reward system, the whole philosophy, right, of of what of what it was, right? And what they could have done was, hey, let's improve the gear and knacks. So if people go into knacks, they get this better gear or and the tier gear is slightly worse or something like that, right? But so anyway, long story short, I don't I think it's not really acceptable just to say, hey, just just do soul self on your own. No, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to play within the confines of the rules. I just want them to be fun. And when I say that I'm going to be degenerate as as degenerate as the game allows me, that means I'm going to freaking th five man quest that I used to solo in, in regular hardcore. I'm going to have a lot less fun doing it. Right. And I've been complaining a lot, talking about, you know, how disappointed I've been with the PTR or maybe I haven't said that outright, but I'm sure you can tell. And what's my solution to this? Currently in the game are, are both Season of Mastery NPCs from season, um, that gave you the Soul of Iron buff, right? And I was surprised that I saw that they were in the game giving you the buff, telling people that you haven't died. But if it's a hardcore server and I see you running around, I know you haven't died. That's redundant. It's stupid. They should either take the NPCs out or those NPCs turn off your trading, mailbox, your ability to group outright. Um, even dungeons, like if that's what it took to get programmed um, or make it so you can only be invited for like a um, within a dungeon, you know, foyer area, right? You know, all those areas. That's probably too complicated. But so, yeah, so that that NPC will check if you've done any of those things up to that point. Like you pull up to him at level 10, right? Has this guy traded, mailed, auction house? Um, nope, he hasn't done any of that. He's never grouped. Okay, cool. He gets this buff that says Soul of Iron. And right, and it, if you hover over it, the tooltip will say, "Hey, this this guy hasn't done any of those things." And then until they get to sixty, wow, you know, that that's how they kind of immortalize their buff, and then they get, they're free to go do those things. I feel like it's such a fun way to play the game, and and a lot of people new coming to this new hardcore server are are not gonna be able to even experience that because there's no reason to. You're just an idiot if you do that, right? Um, without any type of incentive or reward based system that's what drives players you know we're not going to act like the add-on tracking all those things didn't like kind of incentivize you to do it i think the devs just sort of have to sit back and think like okay what made hardcore popular okay it was this mode it was focus tested focus grouped vetted for months and people freaking loved it right and the biggest detractor is you know they don't they hate hardcore you know they're sitting on reddit talking about how stupid it is that you can't do those things they haven't tried it themselves right and they want this experience of what's pretty much classic here with one life is what i've kind of been referring it to to that and what i mean by that it's like that leveling's not the the focus the whole focus of what it seems like to me official hardcore is to be you get to 60 and raid right getting to 60 to be a lot easier you're not gonna have all these people constantly dying before level 20, you know, into their 30s and things like that, you're going to group, you're going to hit 60, and the focus is rating. And I think that misses the mark. And that's why I'm kind of asking, like, who do they make this for? Um, I don't really care about rating. I'm going to raid. I'm going to have characters that raid for sure. But if you said, what am I most excited about with hardcore? It's not sitting in Mullen Core with one life. No, it's not. That's, that's, that's not fun. That's, not, I've done Mullen Core millions of times. I've, not looking forward to something going wrong in there and then dying that's it really doesn't seem too fun to me it's why i've always avoided it on my 60s i've gone on official hard or uh, unofficial hardcore so 
let me know what you guys think. Um, I'd say after 70, 75 hours, I'm going to official hardcore instead of white hot excited. If you watch my videos from like months ago in May, when I was speculating on what kind of servers they'd make. And man, that video, I feel like it's aged pretty well. Because if you look at what's going on with Classic Air, you go watch this video. It's called The Tokens Coming to Hardcore. <laughs> uh, official Hardcore. And I speculate on if we're going to get Soul Cell found or not. And the state of white main cluster at that point, I was talking about how, man, it's, Gold Song is crazy here. And I can see Token coming to that. And then, either way, check that video out. Um, I'd say after 70, 75 hours, I'm just feeling, uh, you know, wistful at this point and, and uh, hopeful and I just really hope Blizzard listens um, a grand on Twitter he said hey you know Solo Self Found might come in a later patch we really have to hammer him on that dudes we need Solo Self Found to come in a later patch we gotta save hardcore pretty fucking cringe like just vanishing and don't not, 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 not opening dude. oh oops I fucked it up there dude. Wow, my god, man. Alright, we're gonna reset that, bro. No, bro, like... I need to do something called what? You stop you... Oh my god! What the fuck? Yo, bro, sorry, man, it's insane! What the fuck was that? My sap did last like two seconds, bro. Oh my, ayo, bro, I'm so fucking done. I'm going to sleep. Yeah, Clash, you're the best, bro. My god, man. What the 